Hey guys, this is Matt with Thrive Off Grid. And today what I'm going to demo is the Harbor Freight Hybrid Gasifier. Um, this is a, a kit that we will uh, adapt to five gallon portable air tanks with our kit. So um, what comes with the kit is the basic reactor, the carburetor, the jet rings, uh, two adapters for adapting the lower tank. Uh, this is the exhaust exit port adapter. This is the filler neck for the, the upper hopper. These are your um, seal rings for the rope seal for sealing the reactor. And then the, uh, the charcoal gas fire which actually makes this a hybrid system. And then I'll provide you with a, a roll of the ceramic um, high temperature seal along with uh, the flanged um, rope seal. Um, you'll need some basic uh, tools, uh, handle grinder with a cock wheel, drill, um, three hole saws, three and an eighth, two and three eighths, and two inch. Then you'll need some basic hand tools, uh, wrenches, open end wrenches, sockets, um, crescent wrench for taking off this guy unless you got a, the right size, which I do, but um, this was out here first. <laughs> and then uh, some basic hardware, tractor supply is a good place to go for hardware. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I've already got the the one tank um, remote unpackaged. So I'm going to start out with the the lower um, tank. And let me get some of the stuff out of the way. So where I'm going to start is the um, the exhaust port. So we're going to, I'm going to cut this out with a hole saw, the 2 and 3 eighths hole saw. And then uh, we'll install our, our adapter here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get it pretty close. I'm going to punch it right on that weld. Let's make that go a little faster. Let me drive a little bit. 
and you want to make sure you have some good fresh battery. any of my other videos I usually use the, the tank seam as a reference for hole alignment and what I'll do is I'll center this <coughs> best I can doesn't have to be perfect Actually, this ring right here, you could use this as a, uh, a template for tracing your holes. And my first attempt was a little bit off. So the smaller hole is actually from the from using this. So now I got my uh, my hole pattern laid out and on the center of, of this layout for the, uh, the the three inch three and a uh, eighth inch uh, hole saw. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do both sides um, off camera this time and then uh, I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Um, so as you can see, I got my holes drilled and the, the uh, exhaust port. So uh, next step is going to be to install the adapters and the, uh, the port. Um, as you can see, I've already applied the high temp seal. I'm going to do that on this one. This has got a, an adhesive backing. So you're just going to stick that on there. Start in between a hole set. And just kind of work, work my way around. You want to cover the flat surface Got some background noise. That's why I generally do my videos at night. Alright, so now that I got that installed, I'm gonna take my center punch and I'm gonna clear the hole. Alright, so my adapters are ready to go. Now you may notice I cut the handle off. You don't have to do this, not a requirement. But those of you that can weld may want to consider putting relocating this to the top hopper because the, the hopper just slips off this unit. So that's kind of unique um, concerning this machine. So I'm going to use quarter twenty hardware, and you should probably use washers. Mine are a little big. I don't have the proper washers for the quarter twenty hardware, but oh, that's another thing too. Is uh, those of you that. Yeah, I'm not going to use washers. You should use washers. I'm not going to because mine are too big. But those of you that can that have taps or if you want to get a, a quarter 20 tap, um, you can tap these holes too. That will help it seal better. Actually, to speed this up, I'm going to use a uh, I got some button heads over here. I think I'm gonna um, make these the flange on this and the uh, the hopper um, funnel um, throat, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm gonna make the, those uh, flanges a little bit bigger to give you some more more room. Hopper fill adapter. That's what we'll call it. So I did a uh, tap um, this part.
I'm a little uh, so what I'm gonna do is run my run my drill through that again. I might have this upside down. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I missed. Okay, so the reason I did this one first is if you want to, uh, if you just do through holes, then you'll need to get access, put your hand in here. And it's only a three inch hole, so if you got big hands, you may need to get help <laughs> from somebody with smaller hands. I don't think most people will have too much of an issue. The other option is uh, those that can weld, can uh, plug weld the holes and just, just run a bead around this too. And that goes for these guys too, you could weld them, solid weld them on if you wanted to.
Okay, so we got that mounted up. So now we'll go to uh, mounting the adapters. Another thing too, if you uh, if you miss or if you get a little bit off on your holes, these flanges are set up. Where'd it go? Um, so that the the top and bottom holes are aligned, so you can go through with a with a drill to uh, make clearance if you need to. All right. So now this should be the fun part. So, you may want to get a, use an extension, um, if you happen to have one of these, this will make life easy for you. And it should be a 7 16 Okay, so I got the uh, the lower actually the, the lower adapter 
Or no, this is the upper adapter. So I gotta install the lower. So I'm gonna do that off camera to help speed things up. So uh, I'll come back. Okay, so I got uh, both adapters on and the, the exhaust port mounted up. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. And we need to get a part off of this before we can proceed on that. So we're gonna move on to this. So this is basically gonna be your, your uh, hopper and where the, uh, the regulator is here, we're gonna remove this and that is going to become our air intake port. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this, this cap off that's next on this end. So it's important to note that don't cut this end off because this will have to align um, with the reactor, um, especially uh, for lighting it because this is how you're gonna light it too. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it on this side of the uh, the well and cut the cap completely off and then uh, I'm going to remove these guys here. Um, I got two different ones apparently, I must have changed the design or something, but uh, those of you that can weld, this may open up an option for you for mounting it later. Um, you might be able to mount it to something vertically. So you could remove um, the stand from this one and then relocate it um, here and then that will give you a, um, a foundation to, to mount it up to something. But uh, the reason we need to remove this is because this is actually going to be the, the stand that, um, that I have designed for the kit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, I'll be back. Okay guys, I cut the, uh, the lid off of this and as you see I uh, um, pre-drilled the holes. Basically what this is going to become is our, our base for this to sit on. And uh, ideally what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to want to mount this base or something. Um, you'll see as we get into the build um, there's a A great actuator for the charcoal reactor. This is also the damper for the charcoal unit. So in order to shut this off, um, we have this damper. Now when we assemble this, this is going to be kind of stiff. So you're going to want to have this mounted to something good and solid so that you can um, shut the unit off. But how you mount it, um, you know, it's totally up to you. What I would recommend is a, a, a four-wheeled uh, utility cart. And then uh, you'll mount it to that, and then punch a hole in the bottom of the, or in the in the platform of the uh, utility cart, and then your uh, clean out. Um, you'll want to have access um, to your clean out through through the utility cart. So that's eventually how I'll, I will most likely have this mounted, and then uh, with this platform, you can simply punch some holes. And go through go through this into the the platform to hold the whole thing down. So as you can see, there's uh, there should be a total of eight holes. Uh, the CNC missed uh, one of the holes on this. It's not not a big deal uh, for my unit anyway. So I just uh, it'll be omitted on mine, but it, it'll still work fine. Um, so as you can see, as uh, these larger holes here, they're five sixteenths. Um, those are for air passages to uh, to enter into the, the charcoal reactor. So what we'll do is uh, we will start by uh, flipping this. So right now this is upside down. Um, the first thing that we're going to install is the choke plate. And this is the plate that we used as a template. So that's going to set on here. I'm just going to align the holes for now. The next part is the, the jet ring for the charcoal reactor. Um, it doesn't matter which way you put it. You put it this way or that way. It don't matter. Next piece is your, uh, your grate and grate damper. Um, now how you orient it. 
um, is up to you. Um, since I got the bracket facing me, I think I'm going to point this outside 180 from the, the bracket. Then your, your next piece is the um, clean out. And then the, uh, the base. So I use well, I use the uh, the two and three eighths uh, hole saw to cut the center out, and then align that with our holes. Okay, so we got our handle here. So we got the stack of plates in our base. So you're not going to crank these bolts tight. You're going to install them, but you need to leave it loose enough to where you can move that handle. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have the correct bolts. Um, these are a little short. But ideally, what you're going to do is you're going to put two nuts. You're going to put a jam nut on here. So you get it set up, and you know you want it, you know, kind of snug, to where it's not, you know, really loose and rattling. You just want it um, snug enough to where you can move that, and and you don't have a lot of play. Um, but for now, I can still assemble mine um, without it. I'll get other bolts uh, later on and, and replace these ones. So I got all six bolts. Now one thing I am going to do is I am going to crank these down because this lid is uh, domed. Um, I'm going to crank these down to help flatten it. What I'm going to do is I'll back them back up, see what you will need. I believe these are one inch. So you're going to need one, at least one and a half inch bolts, um, uh, quarter twenty bolts for this. Back them up. Long enough now. Alright, so this is going to be pretty 
tell you. Should move about like that. This should break in some too. Grease uh, isn't gonna work because it'll basically just burn right out. snugged up and it'll still move free. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't know what's heat, what, what heat's going to do to this. Um, so this is somewhat uh, experimental. Alright, so this is now on its base. So the next thing is to uh, start installing the reactor. Um, so this just slips in. As you can see, I've already applied the uh, the high comp seal.
so the reactor is now installed. Now the next step is to install the, uh, the jump rings. And there should be three of them. And this is lots of fun. So we got our washers here. So what you're going to do is uh, these are roughly 80 thousandths thick. So that's where I'm going to start. And basically we're working with uh, the inside set of holes here. Okay, so this ring fits on the center ones. The outer ones are for the rope seal. That's what clamps that, but that'll be uh, in a later step. And if you drop a washer in there, not a big deal. We can uh, use a magnet to get it out of there, flip it upside down, <laughs> rattle around until it falls out. Actually, it should come off the, the exhaust port. Alright, so we're going to install the second one. And I will be using 5 16 hardware here. That's the second ring. What helps is uh, you can use a contact cement in the spray can and just hit the holes to hold your uh, washers in place so they don't move around on you. I, I'm actually uh, out and we're going to need that for the, uh, the rope seal install. So I'm not sure we might have to uh, go to the store and get some. Okay, now we're going to take the carburetor, align that. And that will sit there like that. Uh, let's see there. Alright, so I'm using a uh, one and a quarter inch by sixteenths bolts. Um, 5 sixteenths is actually more standard what I what I use. Um, this um, kit is so, somewhat special, so it's not the norm. And this is how you're going to light the unit too, is through those um, jet rings. So you want to be very careful that you don't move that around too much. Those washer alignments, uh, they get out of whack. It can be a little difficult to get the the bolts through there. And if they get too far out of whack, then you gotta take it all back apart.
Ta-da! <laughs> Uh, apparently, the gremlins shut the camera off while I was assembling this. So I got it all the way to here and then realized the camera was off. So I think I was getting ready to install this seal. So I'm going to just have to show you how to install that uh, um, without installing it on the machine. Let's see if I can find a flange. Okay, so this will come with two one-inch wide flanges. This flange here, this is your your clamp for clamping on the rope seal. <coughs> and basically, what you're going to do is uh, apply some uh, contact cement <coughs> to the flange of the rope seal. Coat that and then put a coat around the ring and then let it cure and then you'll stick the two together and you'll just work it work it around just like you do the other seal and then basically you install it on here you clear the holes and clamp it down so it's not not too big of a deal and then installing the uh, the top half is the same as here except for there's a a, a base plate for the seal that goes on the very top and you're going to stack all, all the, the spacers the same. So that's basically, uh, that concludes that part of the, the build. Uh, the next part is uh, we're going to adapt the, uh, the fill. So I have to drill, drill the holes for that. And then we'll have to uh, install some stops in here. So basically we want this to come down to right here and stop. And then this port, we want to be aligned just right here so that we can get a torch in there to light, light the unit. So this will slip on like so. And then we'll have some stops that will hit. And And that'll be sealed. Um, you know, if you're sucking air through them seals, there's something wrong with the unit. It shouldn't be uh, that high of pressure at all. Um, if you're uh, pulling air in where you're not supposed to be pulling air in and there's something wrong, it's clogged uh, pretty badly. Um, but other than that, you know, these, these seals have been working for us for six years, so um, it's a good system. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, adapt the uh, the hopper, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I got the hopper done. I'm gonna pop this off here. You know, rather than uh, make things complicated, you know, just keep it simple. All they did is uh, ran a couple bolts from each side um, to create the stop. These are located five and a quarter inches from center to, to the edge. And that worked out perfect. And then as you see, I got the fill um, assembled. So that pretty much concludes the build. Um, our alignment is good. We can get a torch in here to light it. And that'll be uh, plenty for it to breathe. A little wobbly because of uh, my uh, bolts are coming loose because uh, I don't have a jam nut. But uh, like I said, I'll, I'll replace those bolts on mine. But this is the basic uh, build construction of the Harbor Freight Gas Wire Kit. So uh, thanks for watching and bearing with me through some of the silence. <laughs> but uh, well, uh, if, you know, if you're interested, uh, you can contact me through the website, Thrive Off Grid, or uh, check us out on uh, Facebook, and uh, you can get your order going. Alright, thanks.